on Lucky, which means it would boost critical strike chances. Uh, now these might not be the absolute best accessories. For instance, some people might not choose the lightning boots, or the wings, or the paladin shield, or even maybe the celestial stone too. But this, these are my choices because I like the wings and I like to move fast. But I did have the I do have the destroyer emblem, so that's my uh, current setup. Additionally, which will be really interesting is the archery potion which increases a uh, 20% increase to arrow speed and damage and it lasts for yes yes come be chaju as you can see the stake launcher does shoot out pretty fast now according to the wikia that I looked up it can penetrate oh wow yep it just melted right through like a knife through slime a hot knife through slime so of course you get the slime hook and everything like that but I Oh, I got the King Slime Mask that time. That's useful. So what we'll do next is I live in the Crimson World, so unfortunately I'm not going to be fighting the Eater of Worlds today. Um, but what I can and will fight today is the Brain of Cthulhu. In the Brain of Cthulhu, you need the Bloody Spine. The spine. Well, whose spine it is, I have no idea, but... Unfortunately, I got the hollow on top, so I need it. Yep, there we go. Yes. Oh. And bam, just like that. So I see, he dispatched normal bosses with ease. Like, it doesn't even take 10 seconds with the stake launcher um, to beat normal bosses. Um, so it doesn't take much effort at all. Unfortunately from here, well actually from here I can go to the jungle. I can go to the jungle world and I shall face the abomination. I shall face the queen bee. And not Cordelia from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, not that queen bee. Mm. Yeah, this, this stake launcher, the first thing I thought when I saw it, this looks straight up from the stake thing that they have on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's awesome. Um, it's, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite show. I've seen it through probably at least three times. And I, I own it on DVD. And I try to make a point to at least watch the whole series at least once a year. Um, except for season one. Season one starts off a bit slow for me. Um, but aside from season one, I watched the whole thing all the way through. Went too far. But yeah, every time I see the stake launcher, this is part of why I like the stake launcher so much. As I'm not much of a ranger, I'm more of a melee. Um, I think this game just fares melee better as far as, you know, certain things goes, how, how it's set up, but... Go. But as far as range stuff goes, I think this, the stake launcher is one of my favorite ones. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do your dash. Your dash of death. Because that's what we be happening to. Ooh. There we go. And bam. Once again, very easy within seconds. Within seconds. Now the beekeeper is a decent sword before hard mode, and the bee nades are actually the most useful thing. Uh, just thought I, yep, I do have a mirror. Good. So hopefully, hopefully I can get set up to heal. Hopefully it'll be enough close to nighttime enough where I can face off the Eye of Cthulhu. Now, I've been meaning to get into H.P. Lovecraft, because I like Edgar Allan Poe. And people who say, you know, they I like Edgar Allan Poe, uh, they say I should like H.P. Lovecraft. So I've been trying to get, find, uh, been meaning to, but it's always just something I've procrastinated. But one day I'll get to reading H.P. Lovecraft, because I heard it's really good. Uh, a lot of the stories that he has, like the Necrocomicon. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but... Um, I know in, in, I think it's Sky, yeah, Skyrim, they, they have a special side mission where you can have like a, 
HP Lovecraft inspired world with all the tentacles and everything. Okay. Face. Face me eye to eye. And I'm already monster mode and already gone. Just like that. So that was a quick one. Let's see. I'm not quite sure if we have to be at the dungeon to face Skeletron with you. I've never used this before. Makes sense. Oh, I remember now. I think I have to have it equipped. Then I can kill him, I think. Yes, that's what it is. Okay. So, put the wings back on. They don't even really use the item. It's interesting because the the way the skull is shaped, I don't know if you've seen the first or second season of Buffy, but he looks a lot like the Master. The, the way the skull is and everything in the fangs, it looks like the Master's skull from Buffy, too. Which is maybe I'm just making connections where there aren't any, but. Okay, we got the Skeletron mask. The only one left for normal mode, aside from. Unfortunately, Eater of Worlds, I'm not going to be facing that today, is the uh, Wall of Flesh. And cast it into... No, oh, that's the clother. Let's see. Here we go. Cast it into the fire. Cast it into the fire. Okay, Wall of Flesh is awoken. All right. Now, the main one, the main weak point, of course, is the eye. The eye is almost always the weak point in any boss. Um, let's see. There we go. Within seconds. Now, the wall of flesh is probably is the toughest out of all the normal ones, so that one took me a little bit longer, but as you can see, I dispatched it also, which, in my opinion, is the easiest hard mode boss of them, which is the destroyer. And it'll be interesting to see how well the stake how well the stake uh, helps with this. Because the stake can penetrate up to ten if I'm if unless I'm mistaken. And these got different segments. See look at that. Look at the penetration. That sounded weird. I did not mean it that way. Get your mind out of the gutter. Oh uh, Go. Yeah. 300. I'm getting 300 almost every shot with all the crits here. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, every red light that turns off on each segment, that's. Yep. Yep. Within seconds. Now the next one is going to be challenging, or more challenging, and that one. In my opinion, is the next toughest hard mode boss, and that's Skeletron Prime. So, go. This one's a bit tougher, in my opinion. Go. Come on. Come on. That's right. Right way. Mortal Kombat. This one, see the one of the differences is you can see the lights are on the eyes and it has more hands. Best description ever. But yeah, it's got a laser and a drill and all kinds of crazy stuff. Is he compensating for something? Uh, see, this one's a little bit harder. Than the destroyer. The destroyer, like the first time I ever played hard mode, I, I went right through to the destroyer. But this one's a bit tougher, and then the twins is the toughest, um, in my opinion, the toughest hard. Oh shoot, I forgot about Plantera. I completely forgot. I'm gonna have to find Plantera on the screen. Or do a whole separate video of Plantera versus the stakes, I don't know which. Depending on how easily I find Plantera, I guess I'll make a separate video or not, depending. 
and I'll probably be doing two different versions of this video, the same video, one sped up, like two or four times speed, and then one with commentary. This will be great because I'll get two videos out of it, and also, if people want to watch with commentary, they can, or if people just want to see a sped up version, they can, so it's a win-win. Come on. What not that tough? Tough. That's right. Almost there. Almost there. The end is nigh. The end is near. You just have a head. Now, I, right in the love. Three you mechanical fall. bosses. The twins are the skull. toughest. They move fast. They can hurt you really so. badly. And there's two of them, so like if if you get both of them in monster mode, and they're on you, we're like really, really, really tough. Ideally, you only want to get one of them in monster mode at one time. Once they're like below half, they go just crazy. So you only want to get one of them up. Let's see that that spasmatism or spaz whatever it is spazzy. I call them spazzy. But this is where being precise, your, your precision with your aiming, comes into play because this. Unless he's doing that, but then you're taking damage, see? It's tough. There we go. Yes! I killed your brother, and I will kill you. You have seen it all. Your own demise. Retinizer. However, you pronounce your weird name. You look like the Terminator. You look like the Terminator. You do the job. You do the job now. Listen to me very carefully. You're about to be terminated. Here's the part in the Terminator, the first one, where his eye gets exposed. And I don't know if they're making a direct reference with that with this eye or not. I wouldn't be surprised if they are. Alright, so he's not too bad. And for the last last one, for at least for the mechanical ones, is Okram. Now, after him, I have two more left. I have Fishron, which in my opinion is the tough the toughest. Uh, tougher than the twins, tougher than Okram, tougher than all of them really. It's really tough. Now I know to get the full benefit of the Shroomite armor I have to stand still. I have to be hidden. I'm gonna try that right now. Let's see if I can use that to beat him at all. There we go, now he's in monster mode. Pull on monster mode, come on. Right, I have to move a little bit now to heal from the statues. Oh, I no idea why he's called Okrim. I might look that up later on. Maybe it's in some Latin meaning or something. It turns out to be... He looks a lot like Predator. If you've ever seen Predator, that's... I think I've read that in the wiki as well, that he he's probably inspired. His look is inspired by Predator. Except for the third eye. The third eye just throws the whole thing off. But before... Before he goes into monster mode with the third eye thing. There we go. So... After that, 
The only thing left to do is beat Fish Ron. Something fishy is about to happen. Yes. Okay. Run, Laka. Now this is not the ideal weapon to fight Fish Run with. The ideal weapon to fight him with is, of course, the the Flail Run. But I'm gonna try my darndest to beat him. Luckily, unlike Plantera or the other, unlike Plantera, I can fight him in almost un as much times as I have the bait for. So I don't have to look on the map. Set up a whole new area if I lose. The other good part about Duke Fishron compared to the other bosses too is you don't have to wait for night and if night happens or if day happens you don't lose the fight. Now I think after a while it times out. I'm not 100% sure on that so don't quote me but there is times if you go too far away from the ocean biome I think he does disappear. I had that problem the first time I, a couple times I faced him before. This is once again with a, such a quick opponent as he is. You have to be, you have to be very precise with your aiming. Very precise. With other homing items, like if you had a sniper rifle with homing on it, ironically, the, or this would be easier with a sniper rifle with the chlorophyte bullets. But come on, are you a man or a fish? Are you a fish man? Contrary to proper popular belief, I am not a fish man. I eat fish. I love the seafood restaurants and sushi. Sushi's awesome. I love sushi. Tastes so good. Yep, he disappeared. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm back. Uh, the fish Ron and uh, Plantera have proven to be the most difficult out of all the bosses so far. Uh, fish Ron, I couldn't beat at all because he would, I just couldn't beat him fast enough and he would just go away. And Plantera, I didn't set the stage good enough and I would just die. But after working the stage and setting all the stat, heart, the heart statues and everything and the fire and the the fireplaces and even some honey over here to dip into to regenerate my health. I think I've finally gotten it good enough to where I can finally beat Plantera, so um so here we go. This should be the final part of the video. Here we go. Switch to the archery potion. Here we go. You're gonna see now. Dip in the honey potion again. So yeah, setting the stage for Plantera is very, very important, especially when you're first starting. Now, if you have a really good melee weapon like the Terra Blade, like I do right now, and you have really good armor like turtle armor or uh, beetle shell armor or something like that, then then you won't have to set the stage quite as much. Um, but if you don't, if you have like the Shroomite armor, which isn't the best in terms of overall defense, uh, then then you'd want to definitely set the stage with heart statues and wire and uh, buttons and stuff to re help your health. You definitely, you definitely want that. But yeah, I'm almost pretty. I'm almost 100% sure this time I'm gonna beat him. I was so used. I I was had a false sense of security or false confidence that I would be able to beat him because every time I've fought him with uh, the melee weapons uh, I've been able to beat him fairly easily not not a walk in the park by any means but I'd be able to beat him but this time I've got him for sure so this this just goes to show you what setting the stage and setting the proper environment for the arena can, can do and 
I'm not the best at setting doing that by any means, but Yep, I finally kicked Planterra's butt. Finally. It took me a while to set all that up, but I finally got it. So yeah, that's that's uh, the steak launcher versus all of the bosses. Um, as far as I can think of, the only one I couldn't beat was was Duke Fishron. The only reason why I couldn't beat him um, that I know of, and I, it's like I said, I'm not an expert by many, any means, is that he would just go away after a while. So while the stick launcher is a powerful weapon, I don't think it's it's the melee ones in this game are just OP right now, overpowered compared to the ranged ones. Uh, the next ranged weapon I'll be doing uh, eventually is the sniper rifle with the same type setup, the same armor, same accessories, and would just probably chlorify uh, amp bullets. And I will also be trying to crystal bullets to seeing if you know the depending on those two and seeing which one's better overall but yeah I think thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please hit like it really does help out a lot and if you like this content please subscribe and thank you guys so much for watching I hope you have a good day bye everybody